There are a lot of places in Normandy that I, I really enjoy going to. But among my favorite would be this one right here. This is the church at Angleville Alplain. And we, we've done a, a video here before, uh, but this is the place where on D-Day, two young 101st Airborne medics by the name of Kenneth Moore and Robert Wright set up an aid station. As I mentioned, we've done a video here before, but there's a little bit more to this story that we haven't told yet. The church here at Angleville Alplain is the site of what I think is one of the most inspiring stories on D-Day. So again, as I mentioned, uh, this is the spot where two young 101st Airborne medics named Kenneth Moore and Robert Wright set up an aid station on D-Day. And uh, again, you can go back and look at the episode where we talked about this. Uh, we were with Paul Woodage from World War II TV. And honestly, there's no one who tells this story better than Paul. Uh, his book, uh, Angels of Mercy, uh, which deals with what happened here, is also an outstanding resource. Uh, but anyway, in short, you, you have these 200 First Airborne medics that set up an aid station right here in the church. And they're... Uh, bringing in the wounded and treating them here. The, the position gets overrun by the German 6th Fallschirmjäger Regiment. And uh, yet these two guys stay behind and not only treat Americans, but treat uh, the, the German wounded as well until eventually the men from the 101st Airborne uh, retake this position. Uh, we're going to go inside and uh, take a look at a, a few things inside the church. As we step into the church here, well, this is where Kenneth Moore and Robert Wright had their aid station. So you can just imagine with all of the wounded coming in on D-Day, what, uh, what this place must have looked like. And, and again, I've, I've already said it, uh, but, but I'll mention it again that we cover a lot of this in a previous episode that I'm going to link in the description. But just to show a few things, uh, at one point during the treatment of the wounded here, there was a German mortar that came through the roof and landed right here in this spot. Uh, but it ended up being a dud. Uh, had it not, it would have obviously done um, quite a bit of damage. And then if we go over here, well, we can see a picture of Kenneth Moore and Robert Wright. Uh, both of these men would come back here in their later years and, and visit this place. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of them even has his ashes laid here uh, in, in the cemetery. But probably the part of the church that is the most striking is that when the wounded were brought in, they were laid out on these pews. And uh, to this day, you can still see the, the blood stains of the wounded right here in these spots. Now, the one thing that we didn't talk about in that previous episode is that on June 7th, well, a couple of guys whose names you might be familiar with showed up right here at the church at Angaville All Plain. Uh, Dick Winters and Carwood Lipton were right here in this very spot. I'm holding a paratrooper smock that was from the German 6th Fallschirmjäger Regiment 
And the way I know that is because this was actually captured by Major Dick Winters of Easy Company, Band of Brothers. And it came from his collection and we were in the same area a couple of years ago with a pair of gloves that he captured. And um, in the meantime, we were able to obtain this for the Gettysburg Museum of History. The Falschemager smocks are very, very rare. Um, there's not many of them around, but to have that provenance from Major Dick Winters is, makes it extra special. And um, this is a unique paratrooper smock because it's modified. The paratrooper who wore this added some pockets on the sleeves and they're uh, little slots, and I believe they were for um, flare canisters for a flare gun. And I'm really honored, honored to have this with me today in this, in this spot, in this church. On June 7th, um, the 506 pushed through Vereville and up to Ogdenville, a plane. And Major Dick Winters, along with Carwood Lipton, are documented to have been in this church. One of the other things that's really interesting about this to me is that Major Winters valued this as a war trophy so much that he carried it with him through the Battle of Carantan. He must have had it rolled up in a musette bag or, or something like that because there were no Army post office um, outlets set up for the 101st till after the Battle of Carantan. There were some on the beach areas, but they were moving so fast at that point, he wouldn't have had time to mail that home. So through the Battle of Carantan, Major Winters would have had this on him, and also that would have been the time when he was wounded. So it's, it was a really special uh, war trophy for Major Winters, and I'm very honored to have it with me today in Normandy 